Kincaid. It feels like I'm talking to Dad again. Maybe it'll be great as them one day. That's definitely something to aim for, something to risk your life for. It'd be actually even... Okay, and we are back. Midday stream for this week. Since I am available to do so. Only a couple missions this time. Um, because after the next two missions, we have our next decision. We have our next big decision point. No suborders yet because they, because they don't clear after a uh, DLC mission. So, let's get started. Last time we just liberated the Amaratsu colony and we're heading ready for the final push to Mars itself. What do you think, Officer Sonata? Thanks to Commander Amuro, Judo, and the others, we've compared Gundams of our world and theirs. And, in short, from a technological perspective, their units are not the same as those from our world a hundred years ago. That's what I figured. So you're saying Gundams from our world existed in Tobia's world years ago by pure coincidence. Not to mention people with the same name as you, and oftentimes events that were fairly similar. That does seem to be a bit of a stretch. There's always a man, there's always a lighthouse, there's always a city, there's always a there's always an Amaro, there's always a char, the char, there's always a giant asteroid being thrown at the earth. The technological systems of both fields are one and the, uh, the same. I believe it's one and the same, but whatever. So it's pretty easy to switch from units in one world to those in another, in the other. It does seem a little reckless to write this off as coincidence. From our perspective, the Gundams of Commander Amaro and company looked like what you'd get from remaking units from 100 years ago using today's technology. Interesting. And on top of that, Technology is more advanced than technologies like Saikamu, which are op that are obsolete in our world. Doubly interesting. Um, so basically, for lack of a better term, to, to make the comparison for those who aren't quite up to date on this, is what she's saying is that a like how to make the correct comparison here. Um, it would be like the pad on Star Trek. Let me take the pad on Star Trek. It's effectively a tablet computer. Um, so, but it's more highly up to date and that sort of thing. Um, it would the comparison would be if a pad and if somebody had a tablet was carrying around a tablet now that was using the highly state of the art technology from Star Trek: The Next Generation. Um, as an example, if the two parallel worlds are close to each other, what could what would account for the differences in technology? Konami was saying that the, that the Gundam Double Zeta and the Z Gundam were influenced by technology generations prior to the Z One to the X One. Now I think where the difference comes in here is actually. Okay, I, I know what I know what the difference is coming in here. It's because of the whisper. So if you play, if you watch Full Metal Panic, the thing, or read the manga, or read fan translations of the novels, um, the whisper, the like Konami Chidori, are people who are having highly advanced technology, basically somehow, no one knows how for really for sure, from the future beamed into their brains in the past. No one knows why they're doing this, and they've never actually explained this in the show that I'm aware of. The show 
in the manga, possibly even the novels. It's not clear as why. So the explanation here is in basically the universe where Hanami and Amuro and the Double Zeta crew is from. The Whispered has been playing influence on tech, has been having an influence on technology in addition to the regular developments of the Gundam universe. So this leads to, to this could theoretically, basically, once, for example, new types were discovered during the one year during the one year war, development of things like Saikamu and that sort of thing coming much more quickly. Also, potentially, this hasn't come up yet, this could in turn lead to faster development of cyber new types. Now, whether this leads to the same mental instability of cyber new types that we have with, for example, the uh, uh, play blue clones um, in Gundam Double Zeta and Gundam Unicorn, we shall see. Yeah, if you focus on technologies like Saikamu, you could definitely come to that conclusion. Anyway, it's a really interesting notion, and I'd really like to talk to this Kana or, Anyway, it's a really interesting notion, and I'd really like to talk to this Konami some sometime. Use the tactical advisor on the Tuatha de Danon. Although you could you'd never know from looking at her that she could hold a position like that. It's complicated. Again, they have probably not been told what the Whispered are. Yet. You know, actually that's true. Now that I mention it, I never did ask what a normal high school girl like her was doing riding the Tuatha de Danon. So, Judo and no and uh, Hathaway don't know about the Whisper necessarily, it looks like. We'll continue after we deal with the Martian successors. Thank you, Officer Sonata. Now I'll be able to go into battle and feeling refreshed mentally as well. Without having this weird baggage of, of are we actually from the same timelines but different points in this timeline kind of thing going on? Still, it's pretty shocking that our Gundams existed in Tobia's world a hundred years ago. Why didn't you tell us? Well, um, you know, I just didn't want to confuse things with a bunch of bizarre talk. Also, temporal paradoxes are generally considered to be bad. Parallel people and parallel worlds, so the me in that world went missing in action in the Battle of Axis. Yeah, and that only becomes part of popular folklore because you'd already made your mark in history as an ace pilot. You can bet in a hundred years there won't be any record of any parallel me. Well, that's because you take an alternate identity as a terrorist working with a sort of variety of Neo Zeon, and you end up being executed under that type identity by your father. It's kind of crappy. Uh, yeah, you're probably right, Hathaway. That's probably why Tobia is, is being a little hesitant here. You're, you're pretty good with the casual insults, Tobia. I didn't mean to insult you. Well, now on the subject, how about telling us about all that hundred year history? Well, um... Alien invasion, mainly. Yeah, definitely. Might learn a thing or two about our own future. Long story short, Jupiter Empire which is it's basically acts a lot like Neon, Xeon sets up shop around Jupiter. We have a fight with them for a while, and then aliens invade. All right, just leave it to me. First off, since you just mentioned, let's start with the beginning of the new correct century. Wow, for the first time, Velt's wealth of knowledge is actually gonna do us some good. We're going back in time about 200 years, back then the human face was. Cut it out, Velt. It's a problem, Kincaid. It's not a good idea to get biased by only what you already know, am I right? Yeah, good point. Plus, in their world hundred years ago, apparently the seas were blue and there were parallel pe and there were parallel people, but their history is following a different path from uh, than ours. You know, in all the confusion of the Battle of Amaratsu, I've totally forget about this, but what the heck was that black getter robot? You're talking about Ryoma? In our world, before mobile suits were invented, that sort of robot was all the rage. Get a robot was the type that kind of was used in the conflict with the invaders. Invaders? The enemy that Nagare fought against. Ryoma Nagare, right? You know about him, Commander Amaro? Conflict with the invaders, the so-called lunar conflict. I was just a kid when he was the pilot that was ever hailed as a hero. Wait, how could that war have happened during your childhood? 
Let's see, that was more than 15 years ago, so the I mean, Ryoma was only about 10. It was a parallel world not too different from ours? All the relationship between each world and each people. It's pretty interesting to think about. Also, we're gonna need, like, a relationship diagram, and, like, like to make sense of all this, we're going to need about a wall of the ship, we're gonna need a whole bunch of photographs, some, so we can't stick tacks in it because it's metal. We're going to need magnets with little things sticking out of them. Oh, and a lot of twine. A lots and lots of twine. I'd love to do a large scale research since time to find this stuff out. Find all this stuff out. For those who enjoy this, this exploration down parallel universe versions of yourself, uh, Version, people encountering parallel universe versions of themselves, I recommend they check out a, a short a novella called And Then There Was N-1 from Sarah Plisker, nominated for the Hugo Award and Locus Award for, his, for this year. Very good book, available online for free. Check it out. All right, moving back on to the story. They managed to evade the subject thus far, but I'd like to hear more about Judo's world, especially about the Red Sea. Would your world's gamblins be actually more subtle than our world's gamblins? No problem, but it's not really, all, really not all that interesting. The Red Sea, the Earth, the heavens, and all of that. I see. Enough of that. Right now, let's concentrate on the battle against the Marxian successors. Different world, but it affects us deeply. We're all well aware of that. We can't let terrorists like that off the hook. Taking the world's off well and good, but there are things you, you just don't do. Those who don't understand that have to be dealt with. Ours is a different world from Hathaway's. It's, but it's Hathaway Anoa who's here, not Mufti Nabiyu Eren, so it's all right. Yeah. Mufti Nabiyu Eren is the ultimate identity that Hathaway used, Noah uses in Hathaway's Flash when he becomes a terrorist and ends up getting killed by his dad. Noah Bright. There should be a hyphen or a colon in that sentence. Didn't expect to wrap much of the fall even before prep was even completed. I'm sorry if I said Mokusakabe. This is entirely my fault. Don't worry about it. As long as we've got the potion jump, we can pull this off even without a frontline base. Before that, we'll hit Nanisko on Celestial Being, and we'll consider the taking of Yamato as a positive development. So what's our next move? Now the pair of Yamato is done, and they've clearly beaten the enemy, there's no need to hold back. You're on Mars with them with a full frontal attack, and we'll establish the new order. You haven't seen the wave motion gun yet! These Polocat ruins, the site of the old civilization, will become the fighting resting place of the old order. Everyone, be of good cheer! This is our chance to get the connection with the past wars, and become the guiding hand that leads this world. Is that Eureka? Hmm. Anytime now, your sweetheart will arrive. A devil bent on revenge. A prime catch. <laughs> Eureka Misumaru, you will be the one and only link between us and the calculation unit. There'll be no way in hell we're gonna hand you over to them. Okay, so this is gonna be tricky. So, oh, somewhat tricky. Boson particles and gravitational field distortion found. They're here. The wide area distortion field has, li has been lifted. As calculated, the Dandan can be navigated. That That's a sentence. I don't mean to navigate. This amount of gravity, we're fine as long as we maintain high altitude. Alright, let's launch all units. Alright, we get 15. We can't send everybody, unfortunately. Let's send the new Gundam and... 
the Z Gundams, which I'm going to do. Puck Bind and Bang Ray, of course. Absolutely want to send the SD belt, send the SD belt, and... Okay, we don't have, um... All of the robots from, um... The other robot from, um, well, my head, um, we don't have Tinkola's, uh, robot, Akira Tinkola. Um, do we? No. So, so we got seven. Cade. Olivia. Guard Diver provides healing support. Actually... Ursha, because you also think of the three healers. Um... Let's get the Arbalest. Hurts gives us some long range. More slot. We have Black Getter and the Great Maze group for Super Robots. I think we might get some story materials if we bring Mike Gain along. Thank you for everything you've done, Akito. Now you're free to do as you please. Okay, Akito is a um, mandatory uh, member of the party. I will. Akito Tenkawa, are you going to show? Akito, what you do with those guys? However, I'm not thinking beyond that. Akito, we're counting on you, buddy. Probably could have sent Sandbot 3 and Daikar 3. They are the ones in the periphery to me. Thanks. No need for gratitude or apologies. We all share the same nature of the enemy, after all. Okay, I probably should have brought, um, Kira and... Okay. What situation? So just do what you see fit. Yes, ma'am. Captain Hoshino, send them a final warning. Roger. This is Manager Rui Hoshino, Captain of the Nadesco B Unit of the Earth Federation Forces. All private army and Labarsi successors, immediately, immediately lay down your weapons and await our orders. Vice Admiral Kusakame. Our response is clear. Fire! They're shooting at us. Well, that's their response. The time for talking is over. So be it. Yes, we have no choice. All units, commence attack. Strike the enemy squads and crush the Martian successors. Roger. Now we'll settle this once and for all. Seven turns for the SR point. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. I also consider back to my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider packing my coffee. Uh, Tossing me a few bucks also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.